Hi and welcome back to DevExplaining channel. So today I'll do just a quick uh, tutorial in my Let's Test series. This one is about how to set up your Python environment so that you are able to do testing and measure your coverage. Um, I'm going to just uh, show you some quick tips here and where to get more information. And uh, as, I'm, uh, as I'm later going to do another part in, in uh, kind of TDD and test-driven katas, um, this is a prerequisite for that one. So even if you, if you have the setup, it might be worth your while to watch a little bit. Uh, and as always, if you are disagreeing with something I'm showing here or want to add some more information, ask questions, there's the comment section waiting for your comments. So go ahead and go there. But let's get started. I, I try to keep this quick and snappy. So uh, you already see kind of a, I'm, I'm spoiling a little bit of what I'm doing here. So uh, here are the tools I'm using. Uh, I'm not going to try and find the best tool there is. There is plenty of options for these, but these are very easily accessible and uh, well documented and uh, way enough to get you started. I deal with a lot of languages, so I'm typically looking for the ease of use and good uh, support and documentation in the tools that I select. So th these will get you started and these will carry you quite a long way. Here is my little cheat sheet. I brought some slides so that I remember what to talk, but I think it's time to hit the code instead. So uh, let's start by creating a folder. And uh, first of all, I'm using my trusty uh, Windows subsystem for Linux Ubuntu inside my Windows, but that will actually carry, uh, that, that will handle a lot of other environments as well. So any Linux environment will work more or less the same way. And then um, if you want to use Windows, well, you can have Linux within Windows if you like. And then if you are using Mac OS instead, again, uh, it's rather similar. So uh, you might need to change some things if your environment is very different, but I think the main point should be same for everybody. So I'm going to go to my code folder and uh, I'm going to create a new uh, empty folder to start from scratch. And let's call this one like Python testing setup. Okay, here we go. So I have an empty folder and uh, first things I want to do here, well, I need Python. I have earlier made a video about how to set up Python for software development. So uh, if you haven't seen it, uh, it's a good good video, you should watch it. However, uh, doesn't again really matter how you have set up your Python. One thing does matter, I'm using rather a new version of Python. So if you are using a much older one, uh, you might need to again change some things, but uh, why not use the most recent one available? This is not actually the most recent, but it's uh, recent enough. Okay, so another topic I have discussed in my Python setup video was the virtual environments and uh, I, I explained why I do them, but I'm using PyEnv so that I have created myself a virtual environment for Python testing. Okay, and then another thing, uh, I'm setting it in, in my local folder. In this folder, I'm now using that virtual environment. I explained all these in my earlier setup Python video. I, I, by the way, dropped the link in this video as well, so you can go back and watch it. But there's now the Python version uh, invisible file that's telling to use this one. Again, if you don't have PyEnv, if you don't do the similar setup, doesn't matter. But I like to isolate my installation so that whatever libraries I set up here are not affecting any other Python projects I might have. Okay. So... All, all good. Uh, now I can do first step in my slide, which was to install pip, install pytest and coverage, two very common test related libraries. And uh, at that point, I should have them available. I can also try to run them so I can do py, so, sorry, pytest. Yeah, so no tests yet, but we can see the tool is now in path. So this is like step one in my setup have the PyTest available so that you can call it on command line. Uh, the coverage tool is also there, but uh, we'll, we'll talk about that a bit later. So next thing that uh, we need probably some folder structure and my cheat sheet showed how to do this in the, in the uh, command line, we could do that or I can just 
shoot my trusty old VS code. Again, any ID will do for these, but some differences uh, vary a little bit, but VS code is a popular uh, ID right now. It's free to get uh, to download and start using. So it's pretty good starting place for you as well. Okay. So uh, what, however you like, I would recommend that you create some folder structure. So we want to put our actual code in one folder. I'm calling that calc. And then I create another folder just for tests. And this is a rather traditional way of setting things up. You could have something more fancy, but I think this is okay. I would anyways like to separate my test and actual code uh, in, in uh, separate folders. Then let's create a file here called calculator pi. And here I'm creating another one called calculator test.py. There is a convention with PyTest that if you have a test file, you should include that test part. It's either in the beginning or in the end and uh, underscore between. So that's a good setup. I have uh, one place where I can write the code I want to do. And then in an another folder, in another file, I have the test. And if you name them a little bit similarly, you can kind of track that, okay, this test is for that file, etc. Once you start having more files. Okay. So... While we are here, uh, I'll show you the last thing in my slides. So we have done installing libraries, creating some folders. Here is how to do that, that on command line and create the files. But final thing, we could also create that dot coverage RC invisible file. We don't need it just yet. And it needs to be named exactly like this one. But uh, if we have it, I can put one more rule that makes my coverage metrics a little bit better. So I do that already because that was on my slide. So what this does is I'm saying that ignore any other Python files. We are only interested in calc folder when we are calculating how many lines am I covering with my tests. So this is a good setup to have. Otherwise it will still work, but you will get a bit funnier metrics. They are not so accurate. Okay. So you can see here in my ID, I created the, the coverage RC file and I put the uh, run command here. So I, I specify that run configuration, look for the source in the calc folder. And that's my calc folder. Okay. So then we can go back to the slide slides uh, running. Yeah, I, I actually showed you PyTest already. Uh, we could run also some of these coverage commands. Uh, they are not going to be very uh, interesting yet, but uh, we'll fix that later. So uh, I could run these in, in, the, in the terminal outside this saying coverage runs the coverage tool. I have it here, coverage run minus mpy test. So that works, but typically your IDs will also give you some possibilities. So for example, in uh, VS code, I can open terminal and, uh, and this one is set up in a similar way. Well, there's one tiny difference uh, down here. You can see my Python environment. I'm going to swap di uh, quickly for slide because there is some secrets here. But if I go back, you can see that I have uh, clicked and selected my Python testing virtual environment here. So you can see that uh, I'm now using that setup. And then uh, when, when I say coverage uh, run module PyTest, so run PyTest with coverage metrics. So I'm running the, all the tests. Uh, there are no tests, but I'm getting some coverage metrics. There is no code really to cover. Uh, this generates this little coverage binary file here, which is quite a kind of a interesting looking file. But uh, if we want to make some sense out of that, we can do coverage uh, report. So it's going to grab that file and analyze it and give me some metrics. So if I'm able to visualize my coverage metrics, then uh, I'm able to track them on a long run. And uh, the importance there is that I'm able to see if I'm adding or uh, uh, if I'm decreasing the test coverage as I'm adding new features. So it's a good metric to keep an eye on if you, if you like testing or if you need to do testing uh, in both uh, cases, uh, having some coverage metrics is a good thing. Okay. So let's go to the last section of this uh, little tutorial. As I said, this is pretty basic stuff. You can 
find this all also by reading a documentation but but then you would be missing my calm voice uh, explaining and dev explaining these things for you by the way always if you like the video remember to click those buttons uh, share the link for your friends uh, subscribe to my channel if you like to see more because there is more good stuff coming now that we have the basics almost covered but I will end this tutorial by just doing one test and uh, talking about how, how, how you can set up the modules so that they work. So first of all, let's uh, I, I like to warm up with a very simple test. Um, I go to my, let's go to my code, let's go to my test code and uh, import PyTest. I have this library available because I installed PyTest and it has a few little uh, little tools for me. So uh, uh, the test function should, again, by convention, they should uh, start with this test underscore and then whatever you want to test. So let's test something funny or less funny. And then another important part is that a good test is supposed to always have an assert. Actually, a good test should have set up exercise and uh, assert validate. So setup will set up things so that you are uh, ready to test. If you need to create some instances or, or uh, some, something else uh, to get started, configure something, you do it in the setup phase. After that, you exercise, which is you call uh, the part that you are interested in testing. And very important final test is to validate the results. And therefore, you always want to have some results that you are able to validate. We'll discuss TDD later. TDD will lead to nicely testable code. But right now, let's warm up. So let's make a cla bold claim that uh, true is true. I know I told the same joke in my Discord bot Python programming series, but I cannot resist. So uh, this is very important test to know that laws of universe are still true. Because if this test one day fails, it means that something is terribly wrong. So let's run it. Right click run test file and uh, we should get some testing feedback so yeah uh, one thing that happened you cannot see it on your screen i cannot drag it but uh, you can see below my face you can see that there is a dialogue it's saying that we are missing a test framework so vs code wants a little bit of help before i go and do that by the way we can go to terminal and run it here and now we have one test and if i'm actually running it with coverage we can now yeah well there was no data collected for the coverage because there is no code code to cover right now okay we can fix that later but anyway uh, just pointing out that you can run always in the command line these tools and it will tell tell you how many tests how how long they took and how they managed but if i try to run it here uh, the id is always uh, require you to set some things up so i can uh, click this uh, this dialogue that you didn't see and it will give me in vs code i have a choice of few popular test frameworks i'm choosing pytest and then it wants a directory containing tests so it's here so now i'm able to run it and get some feedback where is the feedback by the way it's down here so there's very simple little little tiny check mark past all the tests there is also, uh, I can go to quick menu, do run all tests. That's another way to run these. And uh, I can also see testing problems in at the bottom of the bar. You can see some indicators. And in the uh, finally, in the output, we can also select, I think there was one view for the tests, Python test log. So you can also see whatever happens here. So many, many ways to kind of handle the tests. We will discover more in the upcoming uh, episodes. But I think we have the basics in place. So I wanted to cover one last thing before we wrap this up. Uh, that is how to actually test something. So let's create a minimal code, uh, minimal function here. Funny function. It will return uh, ever popular foo bar. So now we have a, f a minimal unit that we can we can test. And then I want to reach that file in my test. How do I do that? So. First of all, we probably want to import that cal calculator uh, module. Okay, and now we are starting to get some trouble. I think I know what it's saying here. No module named calc. So 
supposedly you are not required to do this anymore but uh, for some reason I noticed that I still need to do it here so I think after Python 3.4 you are not supposed to need anymore to do these init uh, underscore underscore init underscore underscore dot py files anymore but in my experience I still need them with older Python versions, you definitely need them. So it's it's a good idea to mention it in this video. But if you if you know why I need it here for these tests to work, let me know. It might be something to do with the test framework. Theoretically, in the mo most recent Python versions, which I'm running, you shouldn't be needing these anymore. But I, I have figured out that that will help with the test. So let's see if... Yeah, now I'm able to run the test, which means that the import worked magically. So these empty... Uh, uh, underscore underscore init underscore underscore dot py files uh, will make things work when, when you start using this folder structure. Uh, it's not a bad advice because it applies for the older Python versions, but theoretically you shouldn't need that anymore. Anyways, now you saw it in this video, how to set things up so they just work. Okay, but let me know in the comment section if uh, there is some something uh, missing. And uh, that I could do better, of course. So final thing, how to actually then call that calculator. Well, uh, we could change this a little bit. So we could say from calc calculator import and what function do we have available there? Well, we have the funny function. And after I have imported that, we can, we can then call a funny function. This would be our exercise part, right? So I'm calling the function. But this is a bad test, so we could uh, grab the result and then we could do also the validate phase. So I could claim that assert result equals foobar. Sure. So again, we didn't need setup too much here, but we did need exercise and validate phases. Right now, actually, test is failing. I expected it to work, so let's see if I can figure out. Okay. Very stupid rookie mistake when comparing. You are, of course, using that syntax. But now I think it passed with flying flags. We can confirm it by running it here. And now I get that little check mark here saying that all good one passed. And finally, we can go to terminal and say pytest here. And I can now do the coverage run with pytest. And then I can report the coverage right so uh, it turns out we now have 100 percent beautiful test coverage here because we have only two lines of code and we are covering it all right now so i hope this was useful for you you know what to do if so uh, i put uh, the link uh, if you want to get more i like spend spend uh, 18 minutes to go through these basic steps and as I mentioned, it means next time we can just build on these because I assume you have watched the video and uh, managed to do these things. If you are having problems, you can go to the comment section and I, I will try to help you with those. There might be many things that are different in your environments, but this is the very basics and at least you know where we are heading, what is the goal to have. And on top of that, we can next time uh, try to do some more fun, fun tests. And then... Um, you can also go and read the, the documentation. So, so uh, PyTest has own documentation uh, in pytest.org website, and it has a lot more. So if, if you spend 18 minutes here, and then you go, go to the website and spend like 15 minutes more, you are well on your way to understanding how things work. So I think I try to keep this rather snappy. That's enough for this time. Thanks for watching and see you later. Bye bye.